Hi, boys and girls. Um, today I'm going to read a story to you that goes along with the sight word that we're learning, water, W-A-T-E-R, with that bossy R in there, water. Um, it is called Over and Under the Pond. Okay, you know there's two types of water in the world. There's salt water, which is in the ocean, and then there's fresh water, which is lakes, rivers, ponds, and things like that. So this is all about things that you can see over and under the pond. You might have a pond close by your house, or maybe you go visit somewhere where there's a pond. Ponds are a little bit smaller than lakes. Um, so maybe someday you can go and take a look and see what you might find over and under the pond. Maybe it's some of the things we might read in this book. Okay. Over and Under the Pond. It's by Kate Mesner with art by Christopher Silas Neal. Okay, here we go. Over and Under the Pond. Over the pond we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. I've seen these things. I used to collect these when I was a kid. These are cattails. And then here's lily pads. If we see lily pads, what do we know probably lives there? What do we usually see sitting on lily pads? What's your scheme I tell you? That's right, frogs. The water is a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there, I ask? Under the pond, Mom says. Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them now. See, oh, this is the boat. So it's all like the artist is under the water looking up and these are the things he sees swimming above him. It's kind of an interesting perspective. Over the pond, we skim past tall rushes Whirligig beetles loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. Under the pond, minnows dart through waving forests of grass, while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunge. Ooh, I see him. He looks like he's ready to take a bite out of something. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, Three, they slip off and away, splash, gurgle, sploosh, under the pond. I like how he described, or she described rowing, lift and dip and pulling. Over the pond, cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close. Cucklery! Red-winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for her nest. She's holding it in her little beak. Under the pond, a, cat, a caddisfly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. I can tell this pond in the book is not anywhere where close to where we might live because we don't have moose where we live. They're more up north, northern United States. Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. Mm, I've never thought of roots from mud as being delectable. That means delicious. Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on shore. There on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, finally ready to fly. Under the pond, tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails, growing legs, growing up. That's what frogs do. Oh, here they are down here. There's a little tadpole, and as it grows, it grows its legs right there, and it starts to lose its tail as it gets older and goes to live on land. Pretty cool. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still, 
A great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long-legged step. Oh, I wonder what it's going after. And strikes. Oh, it's going after those little fishies. I got it. It catches a wiggling quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. Over the pond we drift, heads tipped up to the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. Under the pond, an otter claws, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. Mussels are these little things. You can't see them very well. They're like little clams, kind of, in shells, but they're called mussels. Not like these mussels, different kind of mussels. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Under the pond, dragonfly larvae watch what swims by. They catch minnows in monster fast jaws. There's the dragonfly larva catching their little snack. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Osprey circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and mink stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears in the dark. These raccoons have sharp teeth. I'd rather they get their food at the pond rather than from my trash cans outside on trash night. Raccoons are kind of pesty that way. Over the pond, we head for home. We glide, swish, bump, right up onto shore as a far off loon calls good night. The sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond, the prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turned frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. And the hidden world under the pond Oh, that's the end. And the hidden world under the pond. Looks like everybody's going to sleep, except for those nocturnal animals. They're still up looking for something to eat, aren't they? I hope you enjoyed Over and Under the Pond, and I hope you enjoy learning about water today, not just the sight word water, but um, some other activities and lessons having to do um, with water, ocean water, uh, and fresh water. Have a great day, guys.